Okay, right back with all of you and Jeffrey Smith, who is with us once a month. It is not hyperbole to say that the efforts to push GMO on the public at large is, in fact, a military operation. I mean, the word deploy fits perfectly there. Monsanto's military deploying these people, hacks, I call them, whores, others call them, out to try to sell this poison to governments, countries, corporations, farms, individuals, you name it. Go ahead. You know, they, it's, it's absolutely a full-court press. There's Hillary Clinton visited an agricultural institute in India pushing GMO technology. Before she visited uh, there, she sent Nina Fedorov, the science advisor, who's basically this pro-GM uh, fanatic who's written this book called Mendel in the Kitchen, that's just basically a pro-GM piece that claims to be uh, neutral. Um, and she's, she also was deployed in Australia to try and convince them that GMOs were, were going to you know, feed the world, etc. So there, it's a huge uh, multi-million dollar effort oh, yeah. uh, by the U.S. government to promote Monsanto's interests, which somehow the U.S. thinks is their own interest. Now, originally it came when the White House was convinced that GMOs would increase U.S. exports and increase U.S. domination of the world food supply. But when that didn't happen, they didn't withdraw support. They just tried to blast open markets for the failed technology. Now, one of the people that's been involved in this, uh, his name is uh, Andrew Appel. He is from Iowa. Now, he was the former editor of the biotech industry newsletter, Ag mm -hmm. Biotech Reporter, and a regular con contributor and guest editor of the Ag BioView email list, which is, again, a rampant pro-GM. He's now the, has a website, GMobile. Now, he was invited to, to be an advisor at a Vatican meeting in uh, the Pontifical Academy, which was basically a pro-GM group where they blocked out most of the participation by anyone who was against GMOs in order to issue an official statement that, that the Vatican or that, that the Church should adopt GMOs. In fact, I think it was New Scientist last month that actually came across, that actually reported that the Vatican was in favor of GMOs, and the Vatican had to put out a note saying, no, it's not. This was a pontifical academy. It doesn't speak for the Pope. Right. But anyway, this guy, uh, Andrew Apple, um, or Appel, I don't know how to pronounce his name, um, he is amazing in what he says. It's absolutely priceless. Uh, <laughs> he was giving a talk at this Pontifical Academy, and his, his, his topic was financial support of anti-GMO lobby groups. Mm -hmm. And he claims completely falsely that financial support for the anti-GMO lobby groups is substantial and severely distorts public discourse over a topic which would otherwise be uncontroversial. Now, here he is speaking, supported by the biotech industry, which pumps hundreds of millions of dollars into promoting GMOs, and he's describing how it's the anti-GMO lobby groups that have, have money, the money rolling in, and actually, yeah. we, we certainly don't. We're, it's we're it's unreal. To... Hey, and look and at then... what you're doing. Uh, excuse me, but look at what you're doing and a few others. You, you're the lead man on the planet in this fight, and you are literally living from hand to mouth in comparison to Monsanto and its hundreds of millions, if not even, even more, if ultimately. Compare, <laughs> What's you know, that? It, it, even if you don't compare me to Monsanto, it is kind, yeah, of, it's of, kind course. of treacherous right now. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that this guy, Appel, he went during this, after September 11th, he tried to use that to criticize anti-GMO heroes saying they had blood on their hands. He also said that the GM Watch, which is a fantastic website, everyone should, should subscribe to their newsletter, which he said... Uh, he takes money from Greenpeace and has been associated with at least one terrorist group. Oh. Now, associated with one terrorist group, what happened was the group Earth First newsletter had an item that linked to Matthew's website. Oh. So that's his association, and it was like it was right. basically a nonviolent picnic protest. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, in a letter, he writes, he said, "I've described your ilk as the pal. I've described your link as your ilk as liars, cretins, and baby killers." He's ridiculed Native Americans' concerns over GM contamination of wild rice. Here's my favorite. Appel suggested there might be a moral imperative. This is when Zambia rejected genetically modified corn mm -hmm. after when they had a, a famine. Okay, He said, Appel suggested there might be a moral imperative for the U.S. to bomb Zambia with GM grain if it continued to reject it. 
And in the same discussion list, Patel wrote of the crisis, quote, I can almost picture the darkies laying down their lives for the, the vacuous ideals, their death throes, how picturesque among the boabab trees and the lions. This is a this quote? This is a guy who's, who's advising the Catholic Church on the moral stance of That's unbelievable. Isn't that horrible? No, that no, the, guy, the guy's a monster. He's a monstrosity. Who's, who's paying him again? Well, you see, he, I don't know who, who he gets directly funded with, but he hangs around with individuals and institutions that get their money from Monsanto. Well, like, somebody's paying the guy a big time. How despicable. You know, it's interesting. I could tell you the story about Zambia. I was there. Um, I, I was interviewing some Jesuit priests mm -hmm. who were experts in agriculture. And when the debate came up, they were reporting what they had found about GMOs, and they were concerned because they had done a study. And so what happened was the U.S. freaked out, and Colin Powell tried to get the Vatican to silence these Jesuit priests. And <laughs> another person lied to the head of the Jesuits in the U.S., claiming that one of the Jesuits in Africa stormed out of a room saying, let them starve rather than eating GMOs. The head of the Jesuits called the African priests, and the African priests, uh, actually they were from America, but they were spending you know, 30 years in Africa. He, he said, he, I explained to them that he never would ever say something like that. They were just giving their academic studies. They had done a specific analysis of the organic versus conventional, cotton, et cetera, et cetera. They had their own farms, mm -hmm. and they were really, and they said they were being attacked mercilessly. I talked to one of the ministers of agriculture at the time when mm -hmm. this was going on, Mm -hmm. who was the minister of something else at the time when I met with him, he mm -hmm. said when he was being introduced to Ann Veneman, the Secretary of Agriculture, right. at the time when this was going on, uh, and realized he was from Zambia, refused to shake his hand and said, backward country, and stormed off. Oh, this they guy, sent, this is too they, much. they sent congressmen and senators and professors, they deployed all these people to try and convince the Zambians that they should take the GMOs. Congressmen and, went. Yes, congressmen. congressmen, senators. What the hell are they doing over there? Aren't they supposed to be representing their constituency here? This well, is unbelievable. In one, of his, in one of Monsanto's electronic newsletter, the Biotech Advantage carried the headline, Academics Say Africans Going Hungry Because of Activist Scare Tactics. The <laughs> activists turned out to be the Catholic's <laughs> theological center staff and the Zambian Agricultural College, who expressed concerns about GM crops. So they're calling them activists. Uh -huh. Anyway... Um, this was an amazing experience in, in Zambia, where everyone there knew about GMOs. And I had written this very long ar uh, article, interview, for a South African uh, investigative magazine called Noseweek. Mm -hmm. Great name, Noseweek. Mm, yeah, it's and, great. And the major paper in Zambia, the government-sponsored paper, ran the whole thing, two full page spreads. And the president's picture was in, put inside there, because what I was saying was vindicating the position of Zambia. And when I went and spoke to the, the Council of Chiefs, they have like a, a, a Senate and a Congress, uh -huh. as well as a Council of Chiefs. There's 23 of them, I think. And I was presenting to them. I said, I am from the United States. So first of all, I wish to apologize. And they all gave me an applause. Because wow. they really, you know, I realized that the United States had been this huge bully. Yeah. You see, what happened was Zambia was, had a famine. There was about five countries that were experiencing a famine. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. was sending uh, corn. And there was a law against importing GM corn. And at a certain point, someone let the government know that the U.S. has been sending GM corn for years and that the latest shipment was GM corn. So they Spikes. said, no, 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 don't send us GM corn. Send us non-GM corn or send us money to buy something else. And the United mm -hmm. States refused. In fact, all the countries of the region asked the United States not to not to send GM corn, and the, and the United States refused. It's gangsterism. Now, it's thuggery. And the thing is, some of them said, well, if you're going to send it to us, at least mill it so our farmers can't plant it, and the U.S. refused that too. That showed you that their, that their agenda uh -huh. was to get them to plant it so that they would get the contamination. Of course, of course. So that, and then we, we talked about this on another show when a U.S. AID representative was debating a friend of mine in, in, on TV in South Africa, and, the, and mm -hmm. they, they finished the show and the lights went out. They continued to debate. At one point she said, you just wait. There'll be so much GM corn planted in South Africa, it will contaminate the whole continent, and no one could plant non-GMO. Years, so ago, years ago I said that. The idea was contamination. And, exactly. And it's, 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 it's unbelievable. You're describing criminal behavior 
that the average American would flat not believe. Secondly, you're describing a situation where the average Zambian citizen knows far more about this GM issue than any American. Oh, yeah. When I was, when I was uh, walking in the university, someone said, why are you here? I said, oh, I speak about it. And I started to describe what, yeah. what, you know, inserting, oh, he said, oh, you mean GMOs. In fact, there's a joke there. If anything's slightly off, they always say, oh, it's a GMO. What happened was they, de- they sent out a fact-finding team of scientists to the European Union and to the United States, and when they came back, they said, definitely no GMOs. Not for the health, not for the environment, not for the e- economics. And so after doing a fact-finding mission, now the, what, the reason why the U.S. was freaking out is because it was the myth that they had propagated for years mm-hmm. that GMOs would feed the starving world. And here was a starving country right. saying no. Now, they didn't starve because of the rejection of, of GM corn. They, found, they had other means of finding uh, food, and they, and they got it, and no one starved. No one mm-hmm. died. Mm-hmm. But the United States used this opportunity to, to condemn them in all sorts of um, articles and letters and, and interviews, trying to make them the laughing stock. And I talked to this minister, and I said to him, you know, if this happens again, call me. Because what we can do is we can, I can tell you the questions that we can raise, and we you know about Michael Taylor's the approval of, of, you know, we could talk about all the, the, the science, the, the real hard questions that the U.S. would be embarrassed if that got into the headlines, because it would show that this was approved in the United States based on politics and economics and had nothing to do with science, and in fact, all of the myths that they are propagating are false. He was so relieved to find a, a um, colleague that he could turn to. Now, of course, it hasn't happened again, and Zambia hasn't needed to, to reject any GM corn, but it was like, you know, there's so few people. I mean, in Africa, they are under an onslaught. Bill Gates is pouring millions of dollars into GM projects. I talked to one delegate from Africa to the Cartagena Protocol on, bio, on Biosafety. I had sent out my book, Seeds of Deception, uh, in 2004 to mm-hmm. all these developing countries, to, the, to, the, to their focal points for the uh, Biosafety well, Protocol. Sit, sitting ducks, yeah. And yeah. one person said to me, at the, when we met, I met him in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, I had, I had lunch with him, he said, you have to come to Africa. We have no access to this information. All we have is what the U.S. government tells us and what the biotech industry tells us. It's unspeakable. And you say the biotech industry and the American government. I'm not sure which is more powerful in terms of foreign policy and its, and its agricultural <laughs> sales abroad. Good, good Look, why, what's, what's to stop Monsanto from hiring pilots and planes to fly over these countries and drop GMO seed? It's possible it has already happened. And it's possible, you see, the thing is, what they do, what they've arranged, is for smuggling of seeds in large, large scale. Yeah, yeah. Bribe, threats, and then the potential releasing of seeds from the air. And like you say, it may have already happened. It may be happening right now. They you know, want um, to pollute the whole damn planet with this stuff, is what they want to do. Absolutely. You mentioned one thing about training. We start the first of four webinars, two-hour webinars, okay. um, to train people to speak about GMOs and also to um, organize local non-GMO working groups in their area after the lecture. And we've just put on our website a, a sign-up page for the Tipping Point Network where people can click on there and enter their interest of mm-hmm. what area they're in, if they want to be part of a local non-GMO action group, and mm-hmm. if they want to be part of an outreach to specific groups like healthcare practitioners and parents, and schools and chefs and religious groups. And we're going to have national non-GMO action groups, each of which are focused on these targeted areas, and they will work with all the individuals in the local non-GMO action groups. And so okay. we already had hundreds of people sign up within the three days of our announcing it this month. Okay, and, which and website you, is it? Okay, responsibletechnology.org. And, I want to um, call on all of you out there who have any leisure time at all, even if you don't and you want to make a difference, this is something that will save lives by the hundreds of thousands and ultimately millions if you get involved. And it could be just that simple. Please, responsibletechnology.org. This is wonderful. I am, I am really heartened. This is one of the few things, one of the few bright spots in the darkness, and it is something that you need to support, folks. Please. And please sign up for our newsletter yeah. when you get on, online. So we Absolutely. Can 